Hi everyone, and welcome to Angel Healing House, and welcome to Walk In, Angel Ariel's Weekly Wisdom for this upcoming week of January 21st through January 26th, 2024. My name is Claire Candy Hoff, and my name is also Angel Ariel, as I had an angelic walk-in experience 21 years ago on January 11th of 2003, which I write about in my award-winning number one Amazon international best-selling book, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, the autobiography of Angel Ariel. Now this is the sequel to the former book, the other number one Amazon international bestseller, one True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness. Both of these books can be bought in Kindle or print form um, on Amazon, in print form uh, through my website, and they're also available through uh, audiobooks to be purchased and downloaded um, through uh, Audible as audiobooks for those people who like to listen to books. So please remember... Uh, that these are going to be general readings here on Walking Angel Ariel's Weekly Wisdom. Uh, but if you're interested in an individualized, personalized reading, revealing, inspirational readings, please do phone me at Angel Healing House. That number is 831-277-3716. That's Eastern Standard Time. Or you can always go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. A big thank you for those who are sharing, liking, and subscribing these videos. Um, and if you subscribe, you can be notified when I post my videos. If you'd like to donate for my free content, I've left my PayPal link in the description box down below with all of my contact details. Now here on Walk In Angel Ariel's Weekly Wisdom, we pull runes, oracle cards, and tarot cards, but we always look into the astrological heavens first to see what planetary energies will be affecting us. Well, after what many have experienced as a rather rocky, challenging start to 2024 with solar flares, energy updates, causing symptoms like ringing in our ears, pressure in our heads, feeling vertigo and dizziness, things like upset stomachs, um, along with feeling one moment like we were blissful and the other moment like we were in despair, well, the good news is that this is because many of us have entered the higher energies of the fifth dimension. And our poor bodies are trying, they're trying to adjust to the elevated frequencies of our already higher consciousness. And um, sometimes they're having a little bit of a hard time keeping up with our consciousness. But with many people expecting a smoother start to this new year, the transitional energy um, is, uh, it's important to understand that uh, we need to integrate these energies because in order to be up and running vibrationally, um, this is of most importance when we are presented with our next step that we're going to be stepping into. Um, and unless our bodies are ready for it, we will not be vibrating at the high enough energy to uh, to bring to ourselves those, um, those opportunities, those events, those connections that will help us move forward in this new timeline. So while that seems to be like it will never happen, <laughs> although my angelic family, who I'm part of as Angel Ariel, we the posse of angels are saying, so what do you think all of that clearing and cleansing, all that surrendering and letting go and healing has been for? There was some good news on January 14th, that, and that was when Venus trying the north nodes, and there was this powerful conjunction that focused on our karmic connections and our destined path moving forward now. The lunar nodes reveal our karmic path in this lifetime. The south node reveals our past and our past lives. But the north node, that's our path moving forward and our spiritual purpose. Together, the nodes are meant to help us to understand the karmic cycles of our lives and to not repeat 
the mistakes of the past. Now, the North Node is about shifting out of our comfort zones. But really important is that it's about our destiny and bigger reason for coming and incarnating back to planet Earth. Now, this is activating our soul's purpose, our soul's calling, or some people call it our mission. And with all that we've been through, it's now time for that to happen. This trine began to bring a lot of people clarity. And the posse of angels wish for us to see it as the first inkling of revealing the next direction for the map of your life. Because the North Node is all about where you're headed, this is really important, you know, at, at this time. The posse of angels is sharing that we should we should be celebrating and expecting more of our next steps and future to manifest for us in the coming weeks and into February. With all that you've been through, Spirit says that you are now, now ready for the connections. You're now ready for the information and the strength and courage to fulfill your soul's mission. We simply were not ready for it before. The posse of angels is hearing an almighty whoop, whoop <laughs> from so many in the collective. Um, yes, we have been through those challenging dark nights of the soul, those uh, challenges and, and struggles that, and trials that we brought to ourselves, but it all, is all for a higher purpose as we are now ready to step onto that new path of service. Actually, yesterday, on January the 19th, we had Venus Square Neptune, which is helping us feel inspired to move into those new directions with our creativity. Now, many will find it helpful to make time for outlets of expression, uh, things like drawing, painting, writing, music, um, all forms of uh, artistic expression. Utilize this energy to infuse your life with um, that uh, characteristic of Venus, with that sense of beauty, finding joy and harmony in the realm of your imagination. Now, just before Pluto, the planet of death and rebirth and transformation, and the sun move into Aquarius today, it formed a pluto Cassimi. Now, what is that? A Cassimi occurs when a planet forms a close conjunction with the sun. And the qualities of that planet involved, which is Aquarius, are thought to be strengthened and more illuminated. Well, let's talk about some of those Aquarius characteristics. Aquarians are all about humanitarianism, working for the greater good of humanity. They're philanthropic, they're altruistic, they're intelligent, independent, they are definitely unconventional. They think out of the outside of the box. They focus their energies on things like social institutions to make the world a better place. Now, for many, this will be a day today of amazing clarity. I, for one, woke up uh, with a sense of feeling brighter, lighter. It's like my battery had been recharged overnight. And what we have may, been, may have been working on to release since uh, the last time, uh, since Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, uh, we, might, we might feel um, unburdened by that. This clarity will help us see what we have been going through as we karmically cleared the path to get to where we are now. Many might even receive messages to prepare them to leap <clears throat> excuse me, leap into the future potentials along the next part of our journey. The posse of angels are saying to me that many who are, have been solopreneurs, um, those entrepreneurs working um, uh, in isolation, will get this feeling like now is the time that they want to connect and do things with others because our sense of community, as Pluto goes into Aquarius, we're going to feel this sense. We want to collaborate and connect and co-create with others. So to help illuminate our path and the themes of this new fifth dimension paradigm timeline that is taking hold of our planet, today, January 20th, 
the sun joins Pluto and it joins it in Aquarius. And we go from the heavier energies of Capricorn to the lighter energies of Aquarius. This will initiate massive change on the horizon. We might find ourselves feeling freer and open to new opportunities. Again, Pluto is a very powerful planet. He may be small, but he is mighty <laughs> with his death and rebirth um, as it enters Aquarius. This is only the second time it's entered Aquarius since 1778. Whether we were conscious of it or not, the collective has been transmuting society, our structures, our systems, our beliefs. We're go undergoing a massive karmic clearing up period. Having reached this hard-won evolution, we are now preparing to leap into our future timelines to support all of our hard work. This is a long 20-year cycle that will reshape our identity. It will reshape, reshape us as a planet, our personal goals. It'll help us to release any fears that, um, that have had us holding ourselves back, many of us, feel a resurgence of confidence, owning and demonstrating to the world who we are, and this resurrection of energy will have many being absolutely magnetic. We are, our, we are at our most uh, magnetic when we are at our most authentic and honest, open and trans, uh, transparent, because with the raising of consciousness, um, Energy is our greatest commodity, and if that energy is authentic, it is connected through the heart, and that's what the fifth dimension is all about. It's this heart-filled connection. This could not come at a better time because over the next few weeks, we will usher in a wave, an absolute wave of new beginnings, as many will be forming new connections and contacts that recognize our unique and powerful, authentic talents and gifts, offering to support and further our services, our ideas, our projects. And this might just see many in the collective stepping into the spotlight. You know, the Posse of Angels and I uh, spoke about in our last uh, video, um, our midweek um, uh, mid catch-up about insights and messages for midweek, um, we spoke about how many of us are going to be stepping into leadership positions, you know, taking our experience, um, then shining a light on the things that, uh, that we learned, uh, the knowledge that we acquired, and how we translated that into wisdom, uh, not only to be of a higher consciousness, uh, but to, uh, you know, sort of um, be able to uh, adjust to and integrate to living in these higher dimensional frequencies. So under this powerful event, we are being called to believe in our ability to achieve success, happiness, abundance, and watch. We are being called. Our inner child is being asked to step into wonderment and enchantment um, as we view the magical way, the synchronistic and miraculous unfold in our lives, transforming our dreams from distant hopes into physical, tangible reality. But in order for that to happen, we have to release the lower dimensional, the third dimensional um, uh, frequencies of pushing, forcing, and controlling and now all we need to do is to be present, um, to simplify our lives, um, and to open ourselves to co-create with spirit, because spirit works in the, in the realm of miracles. Spirit works in the realm of um, unlimited possibilities and uh, magic in order to fulfill uh, our dreams and our wishes. And believe me, spirit knows you better then you know yourself. They have known you um, for eons of time. And um, who better than to give the reins over to spirit? And all we need to do is to be present and to 
be observant to those signs and those signals and those messages when we are presented with something and we feel, we feel inspired to step forward and then we'll be presented with, with um, more. So if there's one thing about being in the fifth dimension, it's not about trying to figure things out. Stop it. That was the former Piscean age. That was not the Aquarian age. The for, uh, now is step by step, moment by moment, being present. So if you're eating something, be present with blessing and being grateful and eating that. Um, if you're uh, taking a walk in nature, uh, don't get too far ahead of yourself. Be in the present moment. And that is all we have in the fifth dimension because everything is solidified into that present moment. So if you can allow yourself to be there with this huge heart center of yours, then you will be given what your soul is co-creating with spirit. And as I was shaking the runes up, <laughs> I was giving them a, a good toss around this morning, um, and I went to choose one, the posse of angels said, okay, one of the things they, they wanted me to impart to you, that now that we're in the fifth dimension, this is not the same rodeo. <laughs> it's a whole new ball game. They wish us to know that many in the Wakened Collective have heard it countless times before, that we're not dreaming big enough, or that, uh, that staying in the vibrational frequency of belief that their wishes would manifest, and little to nothing has happened. But they're saying that with the arrival of 2024, many in the collective have entered a whole new timeline and we're now working with those higher dimensional frequencies. So if something didn't work out before and you really are connected with that purpose or passion of yours, do not discount it because it's not the same rodeo and it's a very different uh, energetic frequency that we are working with now. The rune that came out today is a confirmation of that because it is this one. And some of you might be saying, oh, Candy, you're holding it up the wrong way, but there we go. It's blank on both sides, and it is the blank rune. It means we've wiped. We've wiped the slate clean, and we've exited an end of a cycle, and we are starting a brand new cycle. It's like we popped out <laughs> into a very new timeline. This blank rune is evidence of our most immediate contact with our destiny, and it be can be compared to the rising of the phoenix. As our former life in the third and the fourth dimensions is behind us now, it will take some time for us to adjust It'll take us some time to integrate and get used to manifesting in these higher frequencies. But in the blankness of this rune is unlimited potential. And since we've entered the realm in which we are living from our soul's highest calling now, not our ego, but our soul's highest calling, um, it's really important to remember that the Posse of Angels is advising us to relinquish all control, pushing, and forcing um, something to happen, and to be observant now to wait and be shown signs and messages as how to co-create our next path with spirit, knowing that we're fully guided, protected, and supported by spirit now. Um, there is nothing that is in the way unless you believe that you cannot receive the signs and messages uh, from spirit and you might be blocking that. Um, and there are different ways that uh, in my healing practice we could clear, we could energetically clear those things that, so that you'll be open um, uh, to not block them any more um, for you to receive the messages and to be open to receive them. So next I went to my Enchanted Map cards, and I love this story that came out. The first card that comes out for us is this one, 
yes, this one, is number 25 or number 7. I always say 7. Yes, a lot of people say number 7 is uh, a lucky number. Uh, it's also doing the work of the divine. And the reason it's doing the work of the divine is because we have now, if you're in the fifth dimension, you have aligned with your divine eternal nature. And that's what you're... Um, that's what you're living from, you know, heart-centered, uh, unity-centered, uh, being open to collaborate and connect with everyone, not being in any judgment, uh, not being in competition, all of those things. With the metamorphosis card showing up, the posse of angels is saying, <laughs> again, not the same ball game, not the same rodeo. They're saying, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. We have shed our old skins of carrying lower dimensional programming for lifetimes, and we now find ourselves very changed and transformed into our higher selves. And that is evident by all of those butterflies in this in this card, um, the Posse of Angels is saying that this will take some getting used to being in this higher timeline, in this higher dimensional frequency. But uh, they're saying, please do not put pressure on yourself. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no uh, points for being further along than anyone else. Where you are is perfection for your soul's growth. But allow, do allow yourself to be curious about this, to discover, adjust to your place in this new world of higher vibrational frequency. Um, what you did before in the, and I'm just getting shivers down my, my legs, what we did before um, to figure life out, um, you know, uh, logically and rationally, uh, justifiably, uh, what we did to, uh, to push an agenda, it's not going to make it in the fifth dimension. In the fifth dimension, we are aligned with spirit and we are observant and we watch for those signs and messages on how to step forward. And so what, one of those things that you can do is you can be like a child. You can be curious um, see life as a treasure map now and say, okay, I'm open to receive and ask spirit, you know, please do show me. And when those things come in, even though they may not seem very logical, we can step forward and take inspired action. And step by step, it opens doors for us in the higher dimensional frequencies. So that's the metamorphosis card that came out first. The next card that's coming out for us is 30 or the number three card. Uh, three is the energy of creation and miracles. And the posse of angels wish for us to know that now we've entered the higher realms of the fifth dimension. The way ahead can't be known. It cannot be known until we have embarked and traveled a few steps. But they're saying, you know, they can hear a lot of your questions, but which way to go? Now, having cleared and surrendered and purged so much of our lives before, we have made space for the new to be created. And the greatest thing that we can do is to trust. Trust our intuitive guidance system, ask for signs from spirit, and you will be led to the right path. Having left our old lives behind, we are learning to manifest in this new timeline, and it's not by pushing our will. It's by opening to the will of heaven. Success, or whatever you see success as, is assured if one chooses consciously to be guided by our intuition, our instinct, and by spirit's heavenly guidance now. And uh, it will present us. It might present us with uh, very different choices as to what we did before. Um, you know, if, uh, if this is an opportunity or um, an offer uh, that uh, presents you with something totally new, uh, Spirit wants you to know, the Passive Angels wish for us to know that we'll have all the skills and the talents, the abilities to be able to do this. Um, you know, we might have to get 
up to speed on a few new things, uh, but uh, they really do want us to be open, open to receive, because it's not the same, same old, same old. We are in a whole new timeline, a whole new era of light on planet Earth, and things will be changing very rapidly. So the best thing that we can do is to stay in the present moment, uh, to simplify our lives, um, to break it down to that only that present moment, um, and to uh, to open ourselves to working with um, a sense of collaborating and communi uh, and community. And the next card that's coming out for that is uh, the fourteen is ride the wave. I love this card um, with the dolphins on it. It's a number five, that, and definitely. This is a card of change. Now, the dolphins on the card, uh, they're saying that this is the energy of the fifth dimension, which is absolute joy. It's playful. It's fun. This is the necessary fuel to create in the higher dimensions. You know, this new timeline, it's offering us an energy to ride the waves of those abundant feelings. Um, for the tide has turned. Uh, just like these dolphins have their skills to be able to surf the waters of their lives, uh, these new energies will be supporting. They're supporting our talents, our skills, and our abilities um, to be able to surf the waters of our lives around. Um, and these new energies also will be supporting our hopes and our dreams. It'll carry you forward into a transformative, into a metamorphosizing reality. Uh, but we have to be able to let go of all of those things that do not serve us anymore um, and, to, uh, and to be open to experience life in the higher realms. Um, by allowing ourselves to be free, to be in wonder and enchantment, just like a little child would allow themselves uh, to step into the magical in their lives, uh, the people then in the circumstances um, uh, of potential and unlimited possibility will take shape and help us navigate the most miraculous uh, new life uh, that we uh, can serve in, uh, that we can have joy in, that we can have a sense of community in. And look at those dolphins. They are riding the wave. So that's probably the most, after simplifying our lives, after staying in the present moment, just allow yourself to let go of overthinking, trying to figure this out, and riding the wave. When I went to grab my tarot cards, <laughs> I noticed my fairy cards and I thought, well, I'm going to pull two fairy cards because I felt uh, the urge to do that. And the reason was these two cards needed to come out. This first card is another 14 card. We're just following 14, five is the number of change. Look at that gorgeous card. That's the maiden. That's the inner child card I was just speaking about. Um, uh, the same as with the dolphin energy. Not only is the message in this card of new beginnings, but if it's about spontaneity, growth, a promise for a bright future. Look at the light that this little child is shining. Uh, she is telling us that we are in a very new stage of the new light on Earth's energies. And we may feel, we may feel a little bit vulnerable, but when we allow ourselves to be in a vulnerable state, we put ourselves in a state of being teachable and able to learn. And we open then to new growth. With it being the inner child, it's even more important to trust. Trust that we will be protected and we will be guided with, by spirit and um, for us to be open and observant to the ways that they wish for us to co-create with them. I love, I love the smile on her face and I love the beautiful light that she's emitting. And the Posse of Angels are saying, uh, the greatest commodity in the higher dimensional frequency is our authentic 
light. That's our energy, our life force within. And, and every time that we can cultivate and hold and perpetuate that, then we are adding, adding to the bank of the universe, to this huge bank of light, not only for ourselves, but to re-energize, recharge the planet with light. And the next card that came out was we went from 14 to a 15. Six is the number of harmony, joy, and balance. And it's the journeyman. <laughs> and I love him. He reminds me of the fool. He doesn't have a stitch of clothing on, and he just has, well, it looks like a ball, but I think it's a bit uh, a satchel, like the fool carries, <clears throat> with, with just his experience, his knowledge, and his wisdom. That's all he needs. The words surrounding the journeyman are adventure, independence, polishing our skills, and travel. This card is certainly emphasizing the message of taking, taking that first movement step by step of moving into the unknown, into this new timeline of the fifth dimension of this new world. You know, if we remain present, we will be presented by spirit at just the right place, at just the right time, just the right people, just the right situations to give us a helping hand. Or as this <laughs> journeyman is experiencing in this card, he is being given a willing, helping head to help him along his way on the extraordinary new adventure that he is taking. So both cards of confirmation came through with my fairy deck. Let's go to the Angel Healing House tarot deck and choose five cards. Okay, that one just flipped over. Okay. Here it comes out. <laughs> Hope everyone's well. Hope you're nice and safe and warm. I know it's been snowing in a lot of parts of the country. Rug up, do be safe. And if you're um, at all under the weather because of the cold, the Posse of Angels and I are sending you our love, our prayers for a speedy recovery, sending you some extra, extra energy. That card came out. Let's just see what that is. Okay. <laughs> I love it. It's a great card. Okay. Okay. One two, three, and I'll pull clarifiers for these cards and see what comes out. Okay, that card flipped out. Okay, one, two, three. Let's go to our first card. First card we have is the choice card. Well, this mirrors the making choices that we received before. We really are starting with a blank slate. Um, and the greatest thing that we can do, just like uh, this uh, lady on this card, is we can uh, not try to figure things out, not try to push them logically. That will not work in the fifth dimension, but go, but go in to our intuition. Uh, our instinct, and no one knows us better than we know ourselves, um, our instinct GPS system to be able to guide us um, and to be able to help us um, to make the choices that we need to make that are uh, most in alignment with our soul's greatest purpose, because that's where we've elevated ourselves, not to what our ego wants, not to our expectations, logical expectations and, and attachments, to what our soul um, wrote in the contract of our lives. You know, in this, uh, in this book, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, I speak a great deal about our soul contracts and why we choose certain things um, to be able to learn um, and to be able to, uh, to um, grow in the different incarnations. But make those um, trust 
trust spirit, trust your intuition when you make those decisions and choices. Okay, underneath that is the Eight of Wands. This, by doing this and trusting and following our intuition, then this opens. This opens uh, the doorway for information, for people, for messages to come in. We don't want to block this by our former expectations and attachments as to what we thought we would be doing or we thought what would be happening. But follow your intuition, trust, and then it opens up the messages to come in for us. The next card that's coming out for us is the Ten of Cups. This is the emotional fulfillment. Uh, I love uh, that their children, their dogs, balloons, this is the um, sunshine lollipop and roses card, as I called it, the emotional fulfillment. Um, if we can follow those things that bring us joy, in that moment, it might not lead to something um, extraordinary, but what you're doing is you're putting uh, the, uh, the, the energies of higher dimensional frequencies in the bank. That's what you're doing. So you may be writing at your computer and you see a cardinal outside of the window and you grab your uh, camera and you go out and you photograph the cardinal. You know, you're, you're adding. You're ad the, the universe does not know the difference between you working at your computer um, uh, and uh, trying to get things done um, and then saying to yourself, oh, I'm going to go out and photograph that cardinal. Um, if both of them are bringing you joy, then it's putting joy into the bank account. Now you could be working at your computer and thinking, oh, I wish I was outside, and then the cardinal shows up to take you outside. <laughs> so um, the whole thing um, in life is about balance. Um, but the Ten of Cups shows us that after a long time, Many of us are stepping into the fulfillment of our soul's highest calling and what we are going to be absolutely adore and absolutely love doing. Now, the clarifier for that card is the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles is the card of giving and receiving. This is a karmic um, uh, purpose that you're going to be stepping into. And because it's a karmic purpose, the people and the opportunities and the connections that you need will magically show up for you. Um, if you can just open yourself to receive this new soul tribe that's, that is going to be called in for your soul to be of highest purpose. I love this. So that's another six card bringing us into harmony and balance after the changes and the challenges of the number five. Another major arcana card is coming out, which is the world. This is the completion of one era. Uh, just think back, you know, all those times that, that you came back to be of service to the light and you did a good job, but it didn't quite there were enough people on the planet to take hold. And then you came back again. Um, I've uh, had many clients in past life uh, regressions, past life sessions, and they, um, uh, what's revealed is that they've come back in, uh, in times to try to break the tyranny and the hold of the dark forces on the planet. They did a good job, but the light wasn't strong enough, and so they came back in another incarnation. <coughs> but this... World card is saying that we have brought that light to the planet now and we've stepped into the fifth dimension. The world is definitely split from the third dimensional timeline to the fifth dimensional timeline. And they're applauding all of our work with that, that laurel wreath and how much light is coming on the planet now. And we are part of that. We are each a part of that in stepping into this unity timeline. And what an extraordinary card to clarify this is the Empress. Uh, this is the abundance. Uh, this is a, the harvest time. This is pregnant with uh, birthing new possibilities. It's a three card, the card of creation and miracles. Um, and, uh, and this is bringing like the golden light in this card. It's bringing the same light that is um, featured 
in my world card as well. So allow yourself to be open to the new, to birthing those new possibilities, and to that sense of being a part of something which is greater. The sum of the parts is really greater than the whole now um, as we go into this unity timeline. The next card is the Emperor. Um, this card is another major arcana card, but this is a card of many of us stepping into the spotlight, uh, many of us stepping into leadership roles, and the emperor is, I think the emperor came out in my midweek messages, um, many of us stepping into those leadership roles uh, to take the knowledge, as I said, the knowledge that we learned and having t um, turned it into wisdom, and we're going to be helping a lot of people with that wisdom, the four uh, is a very strong foundation of uh, security and stability for us now, and it is clarified by the pay, by the King of, of Pentacles. This is another card of abundance. The, pen, the King of Pentacles, the Empress, the Ten of Cups, the World card, these are all cards of abundance um, and feeling, and feeling abundant about our place in the universe, not feeling isolated, and that we are part of something much grander, sorry, that will um, start to form here on planet Earth. The last card, another card of abundance, is the Queen of Pentacles. Uh, this is uh, a very grounded card, um, and uh, the clarifier for this is justice, that things are balancing out um, for success, and abundance in our lives. And I love the, uh, the light that is coming off of all of these cards on the bottom. Look at the, sorry, shaking the camera, uh, the bright yellow that is coming out in these cards, you know, the golden light that is um, now shining on the planet. Um, the posse of angels don't want to give me or haven't given me a, an exact number of people who are awakened on the planet. They are saying it's very close to 3 billion. And with this moving into the fifth dimension, um, more and more people will be, uh, be waking up um, and uh, exponentially during the year of 2024 with the things that are going to be revealed. Um, it's going to spark even more people on the planet waking up and more light flooding in onto the planet. Let's uh, complete this reading today with some good fortune. Our fortune cookie cards. Oops, that one jumped out. Okay, okay. Come on, Posse of Angels, give us three cards that we can finish off today with. That's one, that's two, and the third one. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. And three. Okay. First one is interact with nature in the outdoors, around animals, farmlands, or by the ocean. This will be good for the soul and healing for you now. Yes. Okay. Um, they're saying that in the fifth dimension, everything is um, aligned with sacred geometry. And if we look at Mother Nature, um, it, has, um, it is so uh, interwoven uh, and everything is supported by something else, you know. Um, the leaves on the trees, uh, they have their season, and then they die and decay, and the decay uh, keeps the ground warm, keeps those seeds that, uh, that fell um, warm in their hibernation, and then they come out in the spring to be reborn again. Um, everything works in complete harmony in nature, and we have, and, and we have to learn from that. Uh, that we're all one unity, one oneness, and to work as a community, collaborating as we go into this, and we're and we've entered this fifth dimension. Uh, the next card that's coming out for us is a change. Uh, with many going into the fifth dimension, uh, spirit 
will put you where you are meant to be. So many will go through a change of residence, uh, a change of career or a job, and that's in the cards for many. You're restless and in need of a change, and that is exactly what is coming your way. So uh, don't push the river of life. Allow spirit to bring you those connections and those opportunities or offers or things that come up, those events that take you somewhere else where your soul is meant to be, to be of service. And the last one is achievement. Enjoy the limelight. And I did speak about many of us stepping into that spotlight. Um, you've earned it. Um, um, that uh, okay, it, although on the family front, someone's health could cause some secret worries or sleepless nights, but this main card, the, the, the main gist of this card is the achievement. Um, enjoy this, the limelight, you've earned it um, for all the things that you've triumphed over, and give yourself a great deal of credit for that. I hope all that's been helpful. The posse of angels do want me to look under the decks and. Uh, under the deck here, in this card, is the death. But in my card, you can see that she's transforming from one energy to the next. That is the perfect uh, visualization of going from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. So that's the metamorphosis that we've gone through. And underneath the Rider Waite Coleman Smith deck, is the sun. That's what we're going from, that transformation into the sun, another bright yellow sunny card. So I hope all that's been helpful for you. If you do need some uh, guidance, some help and support in the things that you uh, would be most beneficial to release so that you could experience all the wonder and enchantment of receiving in the fifth dimension, please do go to my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. Or else you can call 831-277-3716, Eastern Standard Time. And also, do remember my books, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, the sequel, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, the autobiography of Angel Ariel, and the book about my two near-death experiences based on those and how we are divine and eternal and we do not die, Angels of Faith. Please go to my website, once again, angelhealinghouse.com or Amazon or Audible to download them as audiobooks. Go out, everyone. Fashion a beautiful life for yourself. And I'm wishing you, like always, love and angel blessings. I do look so forward to speaking with you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.